Hi everyone, welcome to Nusantara Folk and Fairy Tales with Heidi. And uh, as you can see, I'm not in my usual place. Uh, I'm actually on a little break in Thailand and I'm sitting at the balcony. It's a beautiful day, a little bit overcast, but I like it because it's cool. Um, so this recording is going to be a bit noisy because there are people like sweeping outside. You can hear the birds. It's actually quite nice. You can hear the ocean if you listen very carefully um, and I've got a fan on so it's gonna be noisy but different so since I'm in Thailand I thought it would be fun for me to tell you a folk tale from Thailand and um, the one that I've chosen is actually in from my book Nusantara a sea of tales I actually bring this book everywhere I go seriously <laughs> and this story is called Pikul Tung I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. If you know how to pronounce uh, this name, please do let me know. So this is the story of Pikul Tong. Once there was a girl who was kind and sweet. She was also beautiful, which was a comfort to some, but also a cause of envy to others. Unfortunately for Pikul Tong, she was forced to live with two of the most envious women in her village, her stepmother and stepsister. Day by day, Pikul Tong's beauty blossomed until the very sight of her made the stepmother and stepsister ill. In order to vent out her frustration, the stepmother forced Pikul Tong to do all the chores from dawn to dusk. She dressed the girl up in rags and fed her their leftovers. Even with such a hard life to bear, Pikul Tong never complained, but she was always happy to help and was grateful that she had a family and a roof over her head. Go and fetch water from the river for my bath and be quick about it, ordered the stepmother. Pikul Tong smiled sweetly and said she would be happy to help if it would ease her stepmother's burden. For some reason, this irked the stepmother even more. At the river, Pikul Tong collected the water and began her long walk home. It was hard work, but she did not mind. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and she felt a lightness in her heart. On the way home, she met an old lady sitting on a stump of a tree by the side of the path. Good morning, Grandma. Are you well? asked Pikul Tong. The old woman looked at the girl and nodded. Oh, I'm quite all right, my child. I would like a little water to drink, though. Yes, of course, Grandma, replied Pikul Tong. I have a bucket of water here. Let me pour you a cup. She then took a little cup from her pocket and filled it with the clear, cool water from the river. The old woman gratefully took the cup, and after drinking, she looked much relieved. Thank you, my child. You are a kind soul, and one day you will be rewarded for your good deeds. Pikul Tong sat next to the old woman for a while, and then when the sun was quite high in the sky, she took her bucket and went back to the river to fetch more water for her stepmother's bath. Unfortunately, by the time Pikul Tong returned home, it was way past noon, and she was met by her furious stepmother. What took you so long? I'm sorry, but on the way home, I met an old lady who needed help. Pikul Tong began to explain, but as she spoke, a peculiar thing happened. Golden flowers fell from her lips. These flowers were no ordinary flowers, for they came from the Tanjung or bulletwood tree and were extremely valuable. The stepmother and stepsister began to collect all the flowers that fell from Pikul Tong's lips. Mother, we can sell these flowers at the market. We will be rich. From that day onwards, the greedy stepmother forced Pikul Tong to talk and talk in order to produce more flowers. Pikul Tong was happy to help at first, but she gradually grew weak. And one day, she lost her voice completely. Angered by this, the stepmother told her daughter to go to the river to look for the old woman. Force her to give you this gift so that we may be rich. The girl grabbed the bucket and walked to the river, and on the way, she met someone. But it wasn't an old, frail woman. Standing before her was a beautiful, elegant lady in the finest silk robes. Her long, dark hair was braided with golden ribbons. The stepsister was quite jealous of the finely dressed lady. Greetings. I need some help. Will you help me, please? Asked the beautiful lady. Why should I help you? You look well enough to me. And then the stepsister whirled around and walked back home. Well, did you meet the old lady? Asked the stepmother. When the stepsister opened her mouth to speak, a wriggly, fat worm fell from her lips. 
Horrified, she screamed, and as a result, more and more worms crawled out of her mouth and fell to the ground. The stepmother looked at her daughter, and then she turned towards Pico Tong. You lied to us. There was no old woman who gave this gift to you. I want you out of my house. Be gone from here. Pico Tong was forced to leave her home with nothing but the clothes on her back. She ran into the woods, feeling quite distraught and wondering what to do. For days, she wandered through the woods and lived on fruits and edible leaves. She slept in the high branches of the trees and drank from the river. How long could she survive out here in the wild, she wondered. Then, one day, as Pico Tong was trying to catch fish, she thought she saw a familiar figure across the river. Grandma, she called out, but no one was there. Sighing, Pico Tong got to her feet and walked towards a clearing. As she stepped out from behind a tree, she bumped into a prince who was out hunting in the woods. He was so struck by her beauty that he dropped his bow and arrow. Why do you look so sad? asked the prince. Pico Tong told him her story, and as she spoke, the golden flowers fell once more from her lips. You have nothing to fear, Pico Tong. You are a kind, gentle soul. I will do my best to help you from this day onwards. The prince took Pico Tong back to his kingdom, where they fell in love and lived happily ever after. The end.